I had to look at it from a long term because I wasn't going to give up on the game. Right. So I had to say, okay, this year I'm going to get better at that. Mm. Next year, this, and then so forth and so on. And then patiently, I was able to catch them. Yeah, that's. I love hearing that because I think so many of us kind of you believe like when when you see people like yourself, it's like it's so easy as an excuse to ourselves to just be, oh, you're destined for it, right? You were made for it. It's kind of like that kind of, you know, like, yeah. oh yeah, it's, you know, but but when you talk about saying, oh, actually when I started, I didn't have the yeah. physicality that meant that I was going to make it. Like you right. had to figure it out and you I love it. figure it out, man. It's, it's just piece by piece and it's the consistency of the work, which mm. I feel like a lot of parents uh, are missing today because we're not teaching that to our kids. We tend to say like kids don't want to do the work, but in reality, it's uh, when we're failing them because we're not, leading them the right way and teaching them yeah you know how to fish you know what i mean and so like the consistency of work monday get better tuesday get better wednesday get better right and you do that over a period of time you know not like one month or two months i mean it's three four five six seven eight nine ten years and then you you know you can get to where you want to go our job is to try to inspire the creativity inside of our children so that they can think through how to problem solve situations. So like, you know, when I coach my daughter's team, it's not about giving them answers. It's about asking them questions mm. and getting them to process things, right? When the game is being played, I'm not sitting there giving them answers or barking out things on the sideline. I sit down and I'm quiet. My assistant coach sits there and she's quiet. And the kids figure things out for themselves or they don't. And then they come back and they, there's always questions. And then you kind of ask them more questions and you help them figure it out. But then you see their level of excitement to practice every day increase because it's, something, it's a process that they are owning, right? They're not coming to get orders barked at them every day. <laughs> They're coming for, 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 for kind of their personal quest to get better. Yeah. And how, how, does you, how do you do us feel about you coaching? I guess that style makes them feel comfortable. But how have you been able to manage that with the pressure of you being there? No, it's no pressure because, you know, it's, it's their process to own. Like I, I have knowledge information that I've, that I've gained, you know, through playing. So like the little details of things I can teach at a high level. Uh, but ultimately it's, it's, it's them. Mm. Yeah. You, you seem, you seem very still and detached about it. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you know, the kids love playing basketball. And so that's the anchor of it all. Mm. They come and they play and they learn and they have fun, and, you know, and they compete and, you know, they challenge themselves and one another and, um, you know, they just get better every day. Yeah. How, how have you seen that with, obviously with Legacy and the Queen, you, you chose tennis. Yeah. Like what was the, what was the choice of sports about? I'm intrigued by that. Yeah. Why tennis? Yeah. So like the first novel we did was, was the Wizard Art series. It was important that for that to be basketball because I wanted the first story to be one of empathy and compassion. Mm. And in team sports, if you don't have that, you can't win. Right. And so it was important to tell the tale of a basketball team uh, dealing with their own personal fears and have those fears and insecurities lead to empathy and compassion for others. Right. And with the second story, I wanted to look more internal individually and, and look at how do you deal with the inner challenges, the kind of the self negotiation that takes place inside of our own heads. And there was no sport better than that than tennis. There's golf. Uh, but tennis, you have more movement, which to me symbolizes life in general, because life is, there's a lot going on, right? There's the elements in tennis that you have to deal with as you deal with in golf, maybe not to the same extent, but they're still there. And then there's the confrontation with the person across the net from you, yes, right? As well as the strengths and weaknesses in your own movements and how you feel in your own body. And because of that, it was important for this story to be a tennis story. Mm, I love that. That that makes complete sense. And uh, give me an example of that self negotiation. I love that word, and yeah. I get that. Can you expand on that a bit? Of yeah, that? like yeah. you know, you're 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 out running on a track, working out, and you start talking to yourself, saying, "Man, my my knee is really sore right now. Maybe I'm maybe I'm doing too much. Like me. Maybe I need to back off. <laughs> you know, <laughs> man, my lungs are burning. Am I, maybe." I, I can just slow down here. I'll do like an extra two sets tomorrow. You know, it'll be okay. Yeah. Right. That sort of stuff. Yes. Like that stuff's dangerous. Yes. And that's when you just got to say, you know what? I'm not negotiating with myself. Yeah. The deal was already made. Deal was made. When I set out at the beginning of the summer and said, this is the training plan I'm doing. I signed that contract with myself. I'm doing it. Mm. You know, throughout the that process, you'll start talking to yourself like, man, I got to, I think I need to, maybe if we, nope. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, this is non negotiable. Yeah, <laughs> non negotiable. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. And for you, empathy and compassion were things that you'd been through. Like, that was, that was yeah. personally inspired work. Yeah. When did it come to your awareness that empathy was something missing for you and that you wanted to develop it? Um, I had a teammate that, that, uh, spoke to me and said, hey, Cole, you know, I just want to feel like as a teammate, you need me. I was like, well, duh. I, I, I can't, I can't, you know, <laughs> like that was my immediate reaction. Yeah. I was like, dude, yeah, of course. But I had to kind of think about really what he was saying and where that was coming from for him mm. and his story and his journey and what that meant to him. And that opened my eyes to there's a bigger game being played. It's not just basketball, but it's the emotions of each individual and the backstory that they're carrying with them, the baggage that they're carrying with them. And if I really want to be a champion and be a great teammate, I have to understand what those mean to help them become better and in turn, help me. 